Hey, what's up guys? It's Austin from Jones Bros Garage and today I wanted to cover five reasons I think you should buy the MT-03 over the Honda Grom. I know this is a very controversial topic because there's a lot of fans of the Grom. Um, there's a lot of fanboys of the Grom also, which I understand because the Grom is a very, you know, distinctive bike. There's not really anything else like it. And it is a good bike, but basically what happened was I wanted a Grom for a long time, years actually, and I just kind of was always on the fence about it and never really pulled the trigger because I had a couple of bikes and I knew that I would never really have time to ride the Grom. And then last summer, my wife decided that she wanted to start riding. And we looked at a couple bikes and we ended up picking out this MT-03. I didn't really ride it much until this summer. And when I started riding this bike, I came to a realization. This bike, it, it, it evokes the same um, the same vibe as a Grom, I guess you could say. Like, the reasons I wanted a Grom are the reasons I enjoy this bike. And that made me realize that this bike is a lot better than a Grom. And I'm not sure if anybody realizes this or if anybody's even thought about this because most people that want a Grom they just want a Grom and there's really nothing to compare it to. But there's definitely some comparisons to be made here. So we'll just go ahead and start by going over the specs of the bikes before I get into my five reasons. Now, this bike has a 373 pound wet weight and the Grom, I believe, has a 230 pound wet weight. I'll go ahead and paste right here the exact weight. But yeah, that's a big difference, and that is one point I will give to the Grom. It is lighter, which is great. As far as power plants go, the Grom has a 124cc motor. It makes 9.7 horsepower, 7.7 .7 foot-pounds of torque, and it's a five-speed transmission. The MT-03 is a 321cc parallel twin, it makes 37.1 horsepower and 20.2 foot-pounds of torque. So, this bike, you know, while it is heavier, it also makes a fair bit more power, which obviously is not the point of the Grom. However, it is saying something that the Grom's top speed is an estimated 58 miles per hour well, this MT-03's estimated top speed is 112 miles per hour. Which I think lends a lot more versatility to this MT-03, but we'll talk about that shortly. As far as fuel mileage goes and range, they're pretty close. I believe the Grom technically has a little bit more range because the Grom has a 1.6 gallon tank and gets an estimated 150 miles per gallon US, whereas the MT-03 has a 3.7 gallon tank, and it gets an estimated 58 miles per gallon US. So basically, if you happen to hit those exact numbers, you'll get, I believe it's roughly like 30 miles more out of the Grom. So not a huge deal and obviously it depends on the rider and especially your weight on something like a Grom could affect it because, I mean, <laughs> you could easily, you could easily weigh more than half of the weight of the bike so that drastically will affect your miles per gallon. So the real, the real shocker to me that got me thinking about this is when you compare the MSRPs. The Grom without ABS and its base form is $3,499, obviously before taxes and fees, and with ABS it's $3,799, so basically 3800 
the the brand new MT-03 for 2022 is four thousand seven hundred and ninety nine dollars so basically forty eight hundred um and if you've been following the bike market bikes have been going up in value pretty quickly this bike just a couple of years ago would have been forty six hundred not that that's a huge difference but just a couple of years and on a bike that's already this cheap a couple hundred bucks is a decent percentage of the bike but regardless yes 4800 before taxes and fees on this mt what's interesting about that is you could find these used for close to the price of a grom and it's not like used groms depreciate much so you could pick one of these up for pretty close to what you would pick a grom up for and obviously you get a lot more with a bike like this so as i touched on earlier reasons why i would buy the grom are the weight uh your insurance might be slightly cheaper but i doubt it'll be that much of a difference the groms also have a really great community you could find other grom riders that'll ride with you and you could find pretty much anything you need about your maintenance or anything there's tons of forums on it because you know on a, when you own a grom you're basically in a community however i will go ahead and begin my video covering five reasons you should buy this over a grom now number one we'll start out with this bike has a lot more versatility than the grom uh, what i mean by that is number one you could ride passengers on this bike now don't get me wrong you could ride passengers on a grom in fact i had a friend that had a grom which is how i've had experience riding one and he used to ride with our little group and he often brought his girlfriend on the back of his grom so yes you can ride a passenger on the back of a grom but is it really ideal no not really <laughs> um it, it's definitely not the best you're already you're already dealing with such little power what is this guy doing sorry guys that uh that freaked me out that guy just stopped in the middle of the road anyhow when you ride a grom you, you're already dealing with such a small amount of power that by the time you add a passenger it really is straining the bike and you're really really going hard on the throttle to try to go anywhere <coughs> and your top speed is even lower than it normally would be however on this mt it's perfectly comfortable <coughs> we we kind of use this now as like an around town commuter bike where if me and my wife want to go somewhere local we'll just hop on this and she'll hop on the back and i'll ride and it works so great for that not only is this bike good for passengers well in the grand scheme of things i mean it's better than a grom you also could take passengers on the highway which is another point i want to get into with the versatility of this bike is that you're not limited to what roads you ride like if you own a grom and you want to get on a freeway where the speed limit's 70 miles per hour first of all I've <laughs> you have some balls if you do that because that's very sketchy second of all it's it's not going to be a good time i mean it might be a good time it might be fun but i mean your bike is is not going to handle it well this isn't the best bike for the highway i'll say that uh it gets a little vibey there's some vibrations in the bars but with a little bike like this it's to be expected but this bike will do 100 miles per hour and it'll get up to any speed limit you need to in the united states this bike will hit very easily and that's with me a 180 pound rider on it so if you're smaller than that and perhaps that's the reason you wanted the grom in the first place 
it'll be even better. I'll go ahead and just insert a short clip of me the other day on the freeway here. So you could see kind of how this bike accelerates on the highway. All right. Um, easily at the highway speed. Easily over the highway speed. Okay, guys. So, the second point as to why I would buy an MT-03 over a Honda Grom <clears throat> is safety. This bike, believe it or not, is a lot safer than a Honda Grom. And this is something I tell to beginner riders who ask if they should buy a Grom for a first bike especially. The Grom is not a good first bike. It's really not. I, I would never recommend the Grom to somebody as their first bike. Granted, it's good to learn the clutch on and learn the fundamentals of how the controls work, but all around, it's not a great first bike to have on the street. You have very weak braking. You are sat very low, so other vehicles are less likely to see you which when you're on a motorcycle is already a big big issue and it just makes it worse and also the fact that sometimes power can save you like i don't know if you see this little burst of power here it can allow you now granted this is this is not an everyday circumstance but it could allow you to move out of the way of things like say a car is getting in your lane you could choose to accelerate like if there's somebody right behind you and you don't want to hit your brakes real hard because you're being situationally aware which you always should be you choose to accelerate that is something that the grom will really struggle with or just you know the odd chance that there's something in the road that you need to dodge and you need to dart out of the way of it obviously that's a pretty rare scenario but regardless on a bike like this you sit a little bit higher than you do on a grom you're a little bit more visible you have better brakes and you have a little bit more acceleration but not so much that it makes the bike I guess dangerous and I'm only saying that because I'm referring to if you wanted this as your first bike you know it has power <laughs> a little bit of power obviously if you're used to riding like big sport bikes then no this doesn't have any power and this point really doesn't really doesn't uh, apply to you as much but in general this bike is definitely safer than a Honda Grom. Okay guys, my next point, and this was a big one for me. This was the deciding factor that made me start to believe that this bike is better than a Honda Grom. And that is, this bike is better for hooning than the Grom is. When it comes to jumping up on curbs, Maybe a little bit of light off-roading. I know that's a reason people like to buy the Grom because it's small and light. You could chuck it around without worrying too much. Well, I found out that you can do that on this bike too. Not a lot of people would think of this because usually if people were trying to buy a bike to do stupid things that a bike isn't meant to do, they just automatically buy the Grom and don't think of any other bikes that could possibly do that as well but I'm here to say this MT-03 it handles this kind of thing really surprisingly well um part of why that is is because you have longer suspension travel than the Grom so basically it's like an upgraded Grom <laughs> you still have a really light bike with a really low seat height and it feels very manageable but you have a little bit more suspension travel a little bit wider wheels and a little bit more power and surprisingly this is a pretty gnarly gravel road 
you know this bike handles it pretty well on the stock sport street tires so there's no reason you couldn't throw a little bit more off-road bias tires on this similar to how you would on a grom look at this little bump here there's no reason you couldn't do that and this will perform better than the grom and the added power helps too um <laughs> yeah baby i believe it just makes for a little bit more fun but realistically this bike has no problem hopping off curbs i wouldn't be afraid to take this bike anywhere where i would take a grom quite frankly so i just think for general hooning about this bike is better than a grom in every situation which that was the big thing for me that kind of opened my eyes up to the fact that if i was in the market for a grom i would buy this instead you still have aftermarket support with this bike I've, I've checked and there's some stunt mods so you still could do a lot of hooning on this bike just like you would the grom and that leads me into my next point is that this bike is better than the grom for wheelies because it's still very light and it's very low so it's good to learn wheelies on because you're confident but it picks the wheel up a lot easier than the Grom does. Just a just a little bit of clutch. It picks the wheel right up. Now obviously, I'm not the best to demonstrate this because I can't really wheelie, but I could just tell that if I was going to learn wheelies and we were keeping this bike, this is the bike I would want to learn on because I'm gonna show you guys something. Not only does this bike easily pick up the wheel in first, it's really close in second. <laughs> Bear in mind, I'm around 180 pounds. So, but the thing is, just like on a Grom, you could just change the sprockets around and get a re-gear, and you'll be able to throw it up in second. Obviously a lot easier than you would with a Grom. Now, what I wanted to show you is this seat right here. The way that it steps, it has basically like a step right here. That is so great for wheelies. That is the first time, I was just curious um, the other day, actually, was the first time I tried. I just gave it a fistful of throttle and popped the clutch to see if it would pick the wheel up. Sure enough, it did. And your butt sits right along the edge of this seat and you feel really secure i'm sure you could fabricate some kind of some kind of uh foot mount here i mean even with a bike like this if you're talking about stunning like you would maybe stun out a grom you could even build a build a seat in the tank here like you would on a bigger bike so i don't see any reason why you would buy a grom for hooning or stunting over an MT-03. Yes, you have a little bit less aftermarket support on the MT, but you still have enough aftermarket support. And in some cases, you could do more to this bike than the Grom. Like for instance, you know, the tank and the little bit of extra power definitely allows you to pick up the wheel a little bit easier so you do a re-gear on this bike you're going to be sitting pretty good now personally my riding style i've never really been never really been someone that rode out long wheelies or anything even though i would like to learn eventually but that's besides the point point is for the reasons i would buy a grom just for hooning about, hopping some curves, riding places I probably shouldn't, mm -mm, some light off-roading, you know, and just riding around with friends on a light bike that's carefree. This is definitely better. I've ridden both, and I strongly prefer this for being a hoon. And it's interesting to me because I don't know if I'm the only person that's ever thought of just 
hopping on an MT-03 and jumping some curbs. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the only person that's thought of that because I don't really see people doing that whereas they do on the Grom. And realistically, this bike doesn't cost much more than the Grom. And it's still small and it's still light. So I don't see any reason why you wouldn't do those kind of things on this bike just like you would on a Grom. Now speaking of this bike being small and light, that brings me to my final point. I would buy this over a Grom because of the ergonomics. Now this isn't like a huge issue for me because I'm only five foot six, but this definitely could apply to you guys. This bike certainly is better for a taller rider than the Grom is. <clears throat> Obviously it's a lot less cramped than the Grom. Now, even though it's a lot less cramped than the Grom is, the seat height isn't much higher. The Grom has a 30 inch seat height. This has a 30.7 inch seat height. So it's less than an inch higher. So if you're a short rider or you know, you, you want a Grom just because they're small, this bike is pretty damn small, but it's not so small that it looks ridiculous which I understand is one of the selling points of the Grom in a way. However, this bike still is really small and light. <laughs> and it does everything that the Grom could do, but it does it better. The point I'm getting at is if you're a shorter rider and you wanted the Grom because the seat height is low, you'll be perfectly fine on this because there's really no difference whatsoever. Well, I mean, there is, there's a little bit of difference, but it's not huge. And if you're a taller rider, you certainly will be comfier on this bike. Just go ahead and look at the ergonomics. You know, the bars are a little bit higher than a Grom. You have a little bit more room to the pegs so your legs aren't as cramped. And me at 5'6", I fit perfectly on this bike so, if you're a shorter rider, you're going to be good too. But, I, I can't imagine, I know there's taller riders that ride Groms. Not only is this bike less cramped than the Grom, I also just prefer the position you sit in. It's a little bit more sporty. Now, it's nothing like a sport bike, it's not aggressive like that or anything. But, your feet are a tiny bit behind you and you still sit upright but you could you could get a nice little tuck on this bike and when you're talking about this bike is like multiple bikes in one is what I'm trying to get at because you could commute with it and it's a really great commuter it's not going to be as hard to commute with as the Grom. Say you're somebody that has to ride freeway, that almost pretty much knocks the Grom off of being a commuter bike for you. That just kind of scratches it out. Or if you're somebody that has to ride on roads where people like to fly, <coughs> being on the Grom could be a little dangerous, but this bike is no problem, so you're fine as a commuter. You still get great gas mileage. But this bike also can be a pure hooning bike. You could take it off road. You could hop some curves. You could do some wheelies. You could stunt the bike out, put some stunt parts on it. <laughs> you could even take this bike to a track. This bike actually would be quite fun on a track. Um, kind of similar to like an RC390. Just a small displacement bike that would certainly handle really well. And then, speaking of track, you could ride back roads with this bike, get in a little bit of a sporty position, and there you go. You basically have, you know, multiple bikes in one here. Compared to the Grom, you're a lot more limited on what you can do. And maybe you're somebody that's buying a Grom as your only bike. In that case, I certainly would recommend this because if you ever decide that 
you want to try hopping on the freeway or you want to try a track day or anything like that you can go ahead and do it with this bike whereas you can't really do that with the grom sure you can take it to a track but i mean what the hell you're just going to be redlining six gear the entire time and it's not even going to be <laughs> not even going to be a challenge i feel like around any track that's not super tiny i could just redline a grom in sixth well my bad in fifth the entire time you guys get what i mean i'm basically just saying you know there's a lot you could do with this bike and there's a lot less you could do with the grom so go ahead and let me know what you guys think about this do you think that i'm just totally wrong do you disagree with me if that's the case go ahead and let me know because i'd love to hear it I have nothing against the Grom, like I said. I think it's a cool bike. Yes, I have ridden them. I've actually ridden a couple of them. I do find them fun, but I don't see any reason to buy a Grom over this, personally. That's just, that's just my belief. So if you guys enjoyed the video, then go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. That's the number one way you could support me. And if you have any other things that you'd like to see or video ideas or maybe you own a Grom and there's something I'm missing here then go ahead and comment below I'll go ahead and respond to all of your guys comments I appreciate it hope you enjoyed the video